I am Vinny Tutterit, and folks, here we are again on the Friday show. Your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. Maybe soft and succulent when we start this process, but hang in there. Before long, you will be lean and mean, guaranteed. Just like our guest today, this guy's been on the show before. I never really get enough of, of you know, reading about this guy, talking to this guy, because I consider him a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I, look, I'm, I'm going to just be honest. I'm, I'm going to just come right. Everyone looks at me and go, man, Ben, you've been around this industry since you were a kid. You know, it was 50 years around this business. You started working out when you were nine. You, you, you've been in, you know, trained celebrities. You've 40 years as a trainer. You know, they look at me as a hero. But then people ask me, who do you look at as a hero? And there's guys like Ben Bocchio or Bocchio. I can never say the guy's name correctly. <laughs> and, and the bottom line is, is that he's got stuff. He's got stuff that's in his closet. He knows where the bones are all buried. And um, I just like chatting with this guy because he's been around for so long. He's got doctorates, um, exercise physiology, you name it. He's, he's been around the block a few times, but he's back on the show today. And we're going to be talking about Nautilus head to toe. Ben Bokiki, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing very well, Vincenzo. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. Uh, having me. Thanks for coming back on to being with me is what I wanted to say. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, ben, we were talking the other day and I think it started with Gina grad uh, on my Sunday school or something. We were talking about, she goes, you know, she mentioned something at, at a gym and she goes, yeah, it's a Nautilus machine. I said, nah, I said, wait, wait, hang on. Did you put, you, you put plate weights on? Yeah. And it's like, and they're both lateral. I said, what was, was hammer strength written on that yeah. machine? She goes, yeah, that's that, exactly what it was written on. Yeah, that said, was hammer. Yeah, yeah. And she even said to me, she goes, wow, you know what's written on the machine based on what I told you. I went, well, well, yeah, you know, guys like me, we've been in the gym forever. And she goes, but it was a Nautilus machine. I said, no, no, no. Nautilus is not like Kleenex. Nautilus is a brand. Right. Right. We call every tissue a Kleenex. Yeah, yeah handle yeah. a Kleenex. Right. And a lot of people call every piece of equipment Nautilus. And then I started thinking, the Nautilus machines that are around today are nothing like the ones that were around in the early 1970s, the first and second generation machines. And you heard me mention on some show where I said, man, if I had all the money in the world, I would just, I would buy myself a warehouse or build a warehouse and just get all of that machinery done, you know, just fixed up to original specs. And that's all I would use. What say you? Yeah, well, uh, I'm, then I'm living the dream. I, I have a studio. I have first, second generation Nautilus machines. I have a couple other machines too, because, you know, I'm not a, uh, I, I, the best machine I think for the body part is what I want. And in most cases, I still lean heavily on the original Nautilus. In fact, you know, you talked about, I just built a three car garage and we already have a three car garage and I'm putting my stuff in there. So I'll be like seven to eight seconds away from my own place. And, you know, I'll do some work in there if people want to come. But anyway, that's what I have. Okay. And, and I can explain, I, I, you know, at some point, if you'd like me to, how this got started, what it means, you know, give me five minutes and I can give you the whole history, uh, which most people screw up, by the way. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of old wives tales and uh, Arthur Jones mysteries and things like that. But I worked with Arthur as a graduate student and all through my years uh, in contact with him, ask, asking about designs. He would ask, you know, he actually was, he was not a friendly guy to most people. He was a little bit wild, you know, bizarre, but he took to me first time we met and people said, wow, he's, he's talking to you, man. So I, I got a lot, you know, and to me, he was a, a mentor. He was a guy who first came out with, you know, real high intensity exercise and the reason why. And he was also, I would consider Arthur a barker, a salesman. Um, he wanted to sell his machines, which what the hell? I mean, I, that's what he did. But in that, there was a lot of, a lot of threads of truth and logic and uh, has helped me, you know, as the foundationally helped me develop my own philosophy and practice. 
Well, you know, author, you know, for me, I was a young guy in Louisiana back in those days. And there was no Google or anything. You, you, you had to wait to get a muscle mag or anything like that to read anything about anyone, it seemed like. And Arthur Jones, to me, and you tell me if I'm wrong, I mean, he, he was an older guy with this really young, sexy wife, maybe 20, 30 years younger than him. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He seemed like a real P.T. Barnum, right? It, it, would that be a fair assessment of the man? He was a P.T. Barnum who was very intelligent and had a very keen sense of anatomy and kinesiology, how the body worked. He came from a medical, I think his father and mother were, uh, and, and his daughter, who I personally worked with, were all MDs. So he had a pretty interesting background, but he, he also could call a spade a spade, but he was definitely a salesperson. I mean, his, his claims, Vinny, were like, if you train with this stuff and you train a high school football team with this stuff, it'll probably be illegal for them to play against normal kids. I mean, you know, was, yeah. you know your, if your arms are going to grow, your arms will get bigger than your head, you know, this kind of shit. But, uh, but basically, no, he, he had a lot of good, solid information and he wanted to sell the stuff that he worked to develop, you know. Um, he, uh, we're going to start, we're going to get into the equipment probably last. I want to keep talking about author. Okay. Um, he wants, and I can't remember the uh, I, the bodybuilder's name, but he took a bodybuilder who was- Casey, Casey, you know, his real, Nick, the guy's real name was Ke Casey, um, Ke Casey Viatori, and you call it Casey Viator. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you want the story him, between that? Yeah, the, the I, story? I always called him uh, uh, Casey uh, Viator, but Viator. Yeah. So, all right, so uh, just to give the audience uh, a background, Casey was a bodybuilder, but for whatever reason, he was out of shape or he broke a leg or something. He was no, he had an infection in his hand and he got sick. He got kind of almost sepsis. And yeah. so he lost a lot of weight. He was deconditioned from what his previous, uh, you know, status was. And that's when Arthur started the Colorado experiment. So basically, it, it take you and me after two weeks of the flu in bed, which isn't going to happen, but let's just imagine. And then we're going to work up. So he wanted to show the exaggerated change from that state, his kind of subpar state for sure. And what could be done with a couple of workouts uh, with Nautilus machines. Uh, I think it was a five or six week experiment. It's called the Colorado experiment. Okay, explain exactly what he claimed. And there were before and after pictures of Casey. Yes. Yeah. And explain, and, and the pictures, I mean, we used to look at those pictures and go, wait a minute. I yeah. need to get to, I was in Donaldsonville. I need to get to Baton Rouge immediately where there's more of this Nautilus equipment. I must use this stuff because look what Casey <laughs> yeah. did. He really had kids like me, you know, jacked out of our minds going. Yeah, we well, yeah, had a lot of us though. I mean, really, you went, to, did you go, with, was it Red Laurel? Was that the guy but down there? Uh, uh, Red Laurel sounds familiar. There was another guy down there. <clears throat> what was his, what was Red Laurel's gym called? Was that? I can't remember, but that that was the guy in Baton Rouge. And anyway, yeah. so I mean, Boyer Cohen, some of those guys used to come around. I don't know yes, why. Absolutely, it, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, well, you know, was from, that's right. And yeah, Casey I, was from, Casey was from down there too. Tons of real bodybuilders down in that area. I mean, when people go, you were around bodybuilders. It's like, <clears throat> man, my childhood was around body because I was this young kid at at eleven or twelve or something like that. I was able to free weight bench over 200 pounds and they would bring right. me to Baton Rouge to do exhibitions. And I would, I would meet these guys. Right. And, um, the, you know, the, these real bodybuilders like kid, oh, yeah. if you keep it up, you're going to be blah, 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 blah. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, it was like this kind of heady stuff for me. And I, I met a lot of those guys in Baton Rouge at the different gyms, Joe Bonadonna, my, my trainer would yeah. take me around and kind of put me on display, but that, that's a different story for a different time. Okay. Um, going back to, <laughs> Uh, Casey, he was a guy that was a bodybuilder. Yes. And had to take some time off because he was sick. I thought it was a broken leg or something and came back and looked like someone just blew into his thumb and just, well, okay. Out. So here's the story. Casey was a genetic freak. Okay. He was, I think, junior Mr. America before any of this happened. Um, he got, supposedly got an infection. The story I heard was something he was working in the factory in Nautilus, but whatever. So the kid got sick. I think he might've even been hospitalized. So Arthur goes, it was called the Colorado, uh, Colorado study. I think that's what Arthur called it. And 
Casey had the Nautilus machines and they were in quarantine or whatever. So it was going to be a controlled study. And Arthur actually participated himself for a week or two, okay, to show what he could do. Anyway, so Casey starts at sub zero and they fed him really well. Uh, supposedly no steroids. And I wouldn't doubt that he didn't because he pro the kid genetically was just different. Um, and he did these couple of workouts. I think, I think Colorado might have been three. And I'll tell you some of that back on three workouts, but they were short, relatively short, one set to failure, whole body workouts. And he took the before and after photos in case he put on, I don't know, some ridiculous 35 pounds of 40 pounds of muscle and whatever, you know, which was, was, let me tell you, it, it was, it was remarkable even under those circumstances. But like you said, the pictures was so visually um, transformative. You said like, holy shit. I mean, look what he did and look at how little amount of workout to what we had all been exposed to before. You know, when these guys did double splits and they worked an hour and a half, two hours, twice a day, you know, and this was, you know, 25, 30 minutes, three times a week. Okay. And so, so the light went on like you and me. I mean, you were younger, but I was in grad school. And I said, hey, if you could get away with doing that, I mean, I don't give a shit how hard it is. And it was hard. Don't get me wrong. It was high intensity. But and, and, you know, what am I doing here? I got, you know, I might as well get a part time job as much time as I was spending in the gym. Right. So right. that was that's what's striking to me. And in the meantime, I was working on my master's and taking some doctoral courses in muscle physiology and all that. And I said, God, this is fascinating stuff because. You know, you, I'm sure you're like me. Everything I could read about this stuff and wherever, whatever source it came from, I would gobble it up. I would just eat it up, okay? Because I loved it. I was, you know, my family was into this thing. I had, my uncle was the tra trainer and manager of Jersey Joe Walcott, who was a, a heavyweight champion. And my whole family was doing this stuff and kind of, I loved it. Anyway, that's the, that's the Colorado experiment. Now, it was an exaggerated example of what could be done because, you know, you started from sub zero because the kid was, you know, uh, had been sick, but he went to a, a very elite level. And he also was a freaky physical specimen. You, if, if you could repeat that Colorado experiment, you'd have to be doing some wild stuff. Trust me. But anyway, it was it got Arthur's foot in the door. It made an impression on guys like you and me and thousands of others. And so Arthur was on his way, you know, selling these machines. Everybody, they were magic, right? Literally, they were magic bullets. And so you got to have them. Yeah. Um, I, I remember the first couple of times working out a Nautilus. The, the one thing I do remember is just, the, I don't know if you could call it the, the precision of it, but just just something as simple as um, the, the shoulder shrug machine, right? Okay. Okay, you just take that thing. You didn't have to put heavy weight on it because the, the, it only had a stack that deep. Yeah. And, you, you know, the way the machine was set up, you would slip, folks, if you can understand what I'm talking about, you would put your elbow between a pad, two pads. Right. And basically you were working against one, one pad against the other. You were pushing down on one as you were pulling up. And a set of 12 on that, you know, when, when you figured mm -hmm. out, it took you a while to figure it out. You had to know how much weight to put on so that when you got right. to 10, you were in trouble. By the time you got to 12, you would, yeah, you would you kill would someone if you could get out of that machine, right? Because, <laughs> you, you know, and how quickly, you know, you, your traps, you see football players with big giant traps. I used to be one of those guys with the big giant traps. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hated that look, but you need it. You know, you need to have right. that in the yeah. neck and everything for football. And, that thing would just pump you out just into it out of space in no time. Right. right. And right. it was just so precise. And when you think about whenever I, I, I do lightweight stuff here in my gym, I'm pointing because of my, my, my barbell is right behind me. Okay. You know, if I go past 200 pounds nowadays, you know, and I just do a couple of sets of 15 at 200 pounds, mm -hmm. you don't even get that same kind of feel you got no. from, from that Nautilus machine, and I could never exactly figure. It's like, is it because it's putting it right on the muscle? Is right. it because? Yeah, but I I never could figure out what was going on there. All right, so Vinny, you, you're, what you're getting to is precisely the, the the history, okay, of why this thing. Before the Nautilus machines, there were not there were not machines that would isolate muscles in their major specific movements. There were no such thing. We had universals that had five or six different stations. They were called jungle gyms or whatever. 
But Arthur was the first guy, and every machine that you see on this market owes him this. He was the first guy to make a machine for each major muscle group in its primary function, okay? So they were perfect machines, quote, perfect machine, all right? So what he did was, and every time you use a barbell or a machine, it provides um, a resistance curve. Even a barbell has a resistance curve, and that resistance curve is absolutely based on gravity. It's straight up and down. So when you're doing a curl right about 90 degrees, you're lifting it straight up, it's great resistance. Once you get up to your shoulders, it's not very good in the beginning, it's not very good. So Arthur designed these cams, that's what, where they got the name from the Nautilus, it looked like a Nautilus shell. He designed the cams to match the resistance curve, the, I'm sorry, the strength curve of a, of a purely anatomical human being. So what he did, okay, I'm studying all this stuff. So I said to him, how did you figure out how to shape those cams for each different muscle group? And here's what he told me. This is how the, I, I developed slow resistance training. This is the story of how it happened. It's two minutes. So I said, how the hell did you develop those cams? He told me, and this may be true, may not be true. Nobody knows for sure. He went to a geriatric home and he isometrically plotted the strength curve of old people that would just be purely anatomical. Okay. In other words, they weren't trained before. They weren't super strong. They were just anatomical movements. And he plotted that graph. And he made a curve, you know, with, with, with uh, isometric points, and he shaped that cam so that it would match that plotted curve. That would be the shape of each specific, specific machine. And each one was supposedly different, which it was. Okay, so that's how he developed these cams. And I said, wow, that's friggin' brilliant, right? Right. So to go one step farther to me, now, when I first started with Nautilus, we were doing explosive movements really fast down with a little control up because Arthur wanted to get as much muscle fiber recruitment, okay, in this short period of time. And there, there were flaws in that, but he had a, the right idea, okay? Anyway, so he plotted these things and he made these cams. So now, theoretically, there was no sticking point, like we used to get with a barbell or a dumbbell or whatever. So you would, you would fail when you actually failed, not because anatomically you were reaching a point where you couldn't match what the resistance of the dumbbell or the barbell could provide, okay? Right. And I hope that's not too deep in the weeds, but no, 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 it's not. I think most people can track. Okay. No. Now, so what I did was, and I, I, I borrowed money to open a Nautilus gym in a factory building when I was 23 years old. And I said, well, if I'm going to spend all this money, which I didn't have the first time I ever borrowed money in my life, um, I said, I'm going to take advantage of those damn cams because I'm paying for them. So I thought he plotted that curve for those cams isometrically. What does isometrically mean, Ben? It means zero speed, right? Yeah. So yeah. I said, what's the closest I could get to zero speed? So slow as speed. slow as possible. Yeah. That is right there, the germ. That is how slow resistance training, slow burn, super slow, any of the other knockoffs, okay? That is how slow training got started because Arthur told me that. And in my gym, you train slow. And we started to get great results. And I cut it down to one set. Nautilus was one or two sets. I cut it down to two set, one set per body part, one set per exercise, slow to failure, okay, twice a week. That was my thing. And Arthur said, you're on the right track. Keep going. So I got great results. And Arthur sent everybody that was going to open a Nautilus gym up to my little factory building with my seven Nautilus machines, which quickly became 20-something Nautilus machines. I had 600 um, members, Vinny, I didn't, have, I didn't know how anything about business. I started a gym because I wanted a good place to work and I didn't want to have a boss, you know? Yeah. And so I had like 600 members in like a year. Wow. I had to expand. I had to expand. I had seven facilities in five, I opened in five years in the Northeast and in Florida. Okay. Anyway, it worked really very well. And, but Arthur tried to make these machines perfect and understand if it's perfect for you, it's not perfect for me, but he tried to make them anatomically so precise, like you said, precision, right? That they were much better than, a, than the resistance provided by a barbell or a dumbbell or a regular pulley system. That's the story. Yeah, and it still works today. Um, oh God, yeah. Uh, one of my, my other favorite machines, uh, oh, let me ask this question. As we know, depending on the machine, some of the cams were smaller, some of the yes. cams were way bigger. Yeah. You said something that's 
made me think of something. So you're telling me not all of those cams were the, the cantilever on them were different according oh, to the author? Yes, yes. They, the, if you see this, the, 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 here's, the, here's the asymmetrical cam. Here's the Nautilus cam. If you have a regular pulley, it's round. So it, the fulcrum from, from where that pulley attaches to where it moves and is attached to the machine always stays constant. Right, never on changes. A Nautilus, on a Nautilus cam, because the, the chains at that time came off at a different diameter from the axis of rotation, they literally changed the torque or the effective resistance of each machine. So they were all different. Right. So, but, but the point I'm making is we all know that as you decrease a joint, your strength increases, right? Because as you get closer, you, you have more strength, it, it, but, but it wasn't it's the not same. Quite that simple, machine. but yeah, it changes. Let's put it that way. It changes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And a compound movement is different than a rotary movement. Don't forget every movement we make with the human body is rotary, which means it makes an arc. And the, the presses that we do are basically, they're a straight line because they're two opposing arcs. On a, on a chest press, your shoulder and your elbow make two opposing arcs, which effectively make them kind of a straight line, okay? So that, not to, again, not to get too complicated, but that's what Arthur took into account when he designed these machines. One of the bigger machines, uh, you know, this is why you need a warehouse to put them in, was the, um, was the uh, pullover machine. Oh, which was a it was a double machine where you had the pullover. Pullover, pull down. And then you had the pull down coming in this direction. Yeah. How did Arthur want that machine to be used? Was it supposed to be used as a do the pull down first, the pull over second, okay. or vice versa? What did yeah. he have in mind? No, we, that was a concept that he had called um, compound movement. So you would do you would do the isolation movement first because that pullover had a pad on your elbow, right? And your, and your lats move your upper arm. So you basically could be amputated at the elbow and still do the pullover machine. Right. right. So that was, he wanted, in other words, when you and I did pullovers in the old days, maybe even now you take a dumbbell or a barbell and you had it in your hands. Still do it. But the weak link in that Vinny was your wrists and your elbows. Okay. Because you had this amount of torque from your shoulder, your, from your humerus. Okay. He put it here. So that thing was called the lower, the upper body squat. That sucker, if you did it right, Vincenzo, that was so globally taxing, such a huge amount of muscle was being used that it was akin to doing, you know, when you do squats, how exhaustive they are for your yeah. whole global body. It was the same thing for those things. I mean, I think that was a phenomenal, unbelievable movement. And then, but so you, you pre-fatigue the primary mover, the, the humerus, then you use Okay, if we do a chin up or we do a pull down, what's the weak link? The arms, not the lats. Yeah. The arms are much weaker. So what he wanted to knock out the, the powerful muscle. So at this particular moment, you had to do it within three seconds. Okay, that particular movement, the arms would be as strong because you fatigued the lats to now push your lats supposedly past what they could do on their own instead of starting with a pull down where your arms are going to fail instead of the lats, which would be the primary target. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I remember coming out of that machine quite often. You, you mentioned it felt like squats. I never thought of it that way. But yeah, you would get lightheaded. You would you would oh, want to yeah. throw up. If you did that machine correctly, oh. you would literally want to throw up. Yeah, I, I used to say um, you were afraid you wouldn't die. That's how much it, <laughs> that's yeah. how much it hurt. <laughs> yeah, you know, we used to sit on the bicycle sometimes. It's like you're hurting so hard going up this mountain. I wish your car would just take me out. That, that, would, that would be nicer. Yeah. But yeah, you know, that was one of those machines that by by the time you did your 12 reps on the pull down part, and then you you would stare at that little bar wasn't very wide. It was about that wide. Yeah, 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 right. And you would stare at that thing and go, Mother fuck. <laughs> you gotta be shitting me. I gotta you, do that. Yeah, I gotta and you would never get to 12. <laughs> you would no, never get to 12. Well, that's a whole that's there's a whole nother story in this 12 rep thing. When I got there, Arthur had this thing. Okay. So I right away said, if we're gonna go slow, oh, let me tell you this. When I started going slow, there was no way in hell with any kind of way you're gonna do 12 reps. But right. really, and Arthur bought this, he bought it for me. And I said, Arthur. It's not the reps. It's the load time. My reps, you know how long my reps took on that Vincennes? On a, mine, 25 seconds for a positive and negative. That's how slow wow. we move. You're wow. not doing 12 of those suckers unless you got two pounds on there. But within three reps, 
unbelievable. The global, the respiratory, you know, the breathing, the circulation, the heart rate, and then the whole over, you get off that machine. I would tell people when I got off that machine, I wasn't sure I could fit through the door. That's how pumped up my lats were. Okay. You know, a little exaggeration, yeah. but you know, that it, unbelievable. And many of those machines were like that, like the, like the leg extension machine. Okay. You, I, you can do squats and I, you know, I've done all this shit in my life. Okay. But I get off that leg extension machine, Vinny, I could not literally, I put you in my gyms. I put those machines in order so you don't have to walk more than two or three steps. Okay. Oh, I, I can't tell you the number of times. Um, I, look, at, when I play college ball, I'm going to brag a little bit. Yeah. My, my quads, if, if, what I would do is I would measure six and a half inches above the top of my kneecap. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I would go up and then wrap around my leg. Right. I was 32 inches on the right, yeah, 33 crazy. on the left. Yeah. That's body, but that's, that's Tom Platt size. Oh, that's well, yeah, that's crazy. You know, um, you the, the black guys on the team, because black kids would always, they came up with the cool, coolest nicknames <laughs> and um, <laughs> they started calling me Link. <laughs> and I was like, Link? huh? Lancelot Link? <laughs> no. It's like all of a sudden I started hearing Link, 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 Link. And it's like, and I was trying to figure it out. Yeah, I would just go, yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to figure it out, but I was, I was good friends with one guy. We grew up in the same town, right? Yeah. And he was a black kid because, you know, they would all hang out at night. And yeah. I said, Donald, um, all the black guys have been calling me Link. <laughs> I know what, what it is. You know, you, you, did you figure it out? Oh, I know what it is. Yes, sir. <laughs> it, it's like, you know, because you're hairy. And I'm like, yeah, and it's like, and you look like an ape. You're the missing link. They call you Link because you're the missing link. And I was like, those uh, sons of bitches, those mother efforts. Yeah, they, they called me Link. I had these legs like Robert Newhouse. You know, it's just yes, I do. My, my waist is 31 right now. My waist right now it's at smaller. 59 is smaller than either of my thighs. One was th 31, the other one was 32. And no I matter how you, much I gain, I know all about it. Trust me. So. And people was like, it's like those Nautilus leg press and Nautilus leg curl. I used to do Nautilus leg curls like my life depended on it mm. because I never wanted to pull hamstrings. And yep. I had those kind of hamstrings that look like bodybuilder hamstrings. You can see both of the biceps coming right. out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the big giant bulbous yeah. peak in it. No, I got and it. It was all the Nautilus leg curl machine. Yeah. and. And the Nautilus leg press. I mean, I, you try to explain that to people today, and they're like, what? What are you talking about? It's like, yeah, yeah. And, and by yeah. the way, even and, and I, now you got me all excited, man. Hang on. <laughs> even when I lost all the weight after football, I couldn't wait to, to lose that look, right? Yeah, okay. And I got in, when I got to LA, they used to use me for modeling. I don't know if you saw the famous conch shell photo online, you know, where I'm, I'm naked. And I'm covered up by a conch shell. Oh Christ, I haven't and, seen it then. Let me I'm gonna do that maybe before dinner, not after. Yeah, okay. yeah, I would do it <laughs> do it way after dinner. You won't be able to eat. So um, you know, everyone you know, is like, man, you know, how do you, they used to ask me, how do you get your abs? How did you get those abs? The abs that it's like the abs come from the Nautilus pullover machine. Oh yeah. And they were like, Wait, what? Yeah, the yeah. Nautilus yeah. pullover and they go, unbelievable. What are, you, what are you talking about? And I said, look. You guys all say I have a 20 pack, but most, if you start counting that 20 pack, most of it is serratus muscles. Right, right, right. right, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I got the eight pack going. I got, I got the rexus abdominis going down the middle, but you're, you, you guys are all fixated yeah, on the rest, finger yeah. muscles, you know? Yep, yep, yep. And they, it's like that machine created muscles that you just can't get. That's why- Because it isolated, Vinny. You see, yeah. they're, they're, okay, they're powerful muscles. If I ask you to do, uh, I'm trying to remember the weights back then, but if I ask you to do a dumbbell pullover and you had 140 pounds on there, that was a shit house of weight. Yeah. But you go on a Nautilus machine and you could do 240 because yeah. you didn't have the weak link of your wrists and your elbows. That was the whole idea behind that. So the massive amount of resistance could get to the, I always would tell people, even now when I train them on that, pull from your rib cage, okay? Yeah. Try to feel that. Because you're, you're going to try to muscle it from your shoulders and your triceps and all this. You pull from your rib cage. It's the most remarkable ab, like you said, ab exercise. Because what are your abs doing? Your abs, 
try to bend you forward. And when you're back here with weight on you, you've got to bend forward like a mother. You're not going to produce much movement, but the tension is enormous and it's isolated and it's direct. Okay. That's, that's, that's some of the beauty of the Nautilus machines. Absolutely. And it, and really like the lateral machine, the pec machine, I mean, phenomenal. I mean, they, they were really wonderful. And, and now there's so many knockoffs. I mean, and I'm not saying they're even bad or anything. I'm just saying, if, if you go back and try to say, why, why are we at this point? It started there. That was the germ. That was the start of this whole new, you know, exercise machine revolution. And really through Arthur and honestly, through myself, high intensity. Okay. In other words, he, he was my wise guy, you know, wise guy Italian from New York at these conferences. I was a kid at the point. Well, you got to do three sets of 10. And the last three reps of the third set are the ones that count. So me being a wise guy, Italian kid from New York, I would raise my hand. And I had a master's degree by then. I said, okay, if the last three of the third set are the ones that count, what's the purpose of the first 27? What are yeah. we doing? Jerking around here? I mean, you know, and everybody go, oh. So I said, I want to do the last three to count first when I'm strong and capable, not after you ask me to do 27 reps and I'm fatigued as hell. Does that make sense? I want to be fatigued by working hard, not by working a lot. Yeah, different muscle fiber um, recruitment, and I can go into that. That's there's it has a little to do with zone two and zone three and zone five. Uh, we could get into that too, but that's that's really when you want to work hard, when you're capable, when you're strong. So I said instead of doing the high intensity stuff we used to do in the old days, a lot of explosive weight, heavy weight. I said, what if I reduce the speed because um, the damaging damaging part of exercise is the force and force is mass times acceleration. Acceleration means you move fast. That's really what it means. So I took the acceleration out of it. So now I had constant muscle load. So now according to physiology and according to what really happens in the human body, within 90 seconds, I fatigued the shit out of those muscles to the point that they reach a threshold in which they have to adapt upwardly. That's all we want to do. Stimulate that threshold, adapt upwardly, get the recovery, and get out of dodge any more than that to me is bullshit okay it's just do something else stimulate the process let it happen do it again you know i become friends uh, I, I belong to a gym in town here and um uh where, I are, you at, in Gen where are you at i'm in central virginia i don't say exactly oh, where I'm. there's enough people that want oh, okay to all right i'm just i just want but, to get but I'm, I'm in central virginia now and um i i work out as you can tell i, I have a squat rack behind me i have dumbbells okay. over here i have you know, aerobic equipment over here. Yeah, I, I'm always encased in, in my workout stuff, you know, and I, yeah. I love to work out. I've been doing it my entire life. Right. But I also like going to the local gym. So it gets me out of the house in between podcasts that uh, um, they have equipment. I don't have a leg press machine here. So right. Right. You'll, you'll find me there on leg day. Um, so I meet this guy, right? This guy's he's not about my age. He's exactly my age. We have the same kind of sensibilities and, and we recognize each other because we're the only two there midday, you know, Okay. Yeah. pretty much. And, you know, he knew he saw I was the new kid in town came over and said hi. And, you know, we started talking and uh, before long, you know, the guy invited me to his house last week for a drink type of thing. Right. So yeah, we became friends and about a month or so after we became friends, he said, man, I wish I could do what you do. And I said, well, what's that? <laughs> what yeah, am I doing? What part of me? He goes, man, you use really, really lightweight and you, you move at a snail space. He goes, I've always heard about that. I just can't do it. I, I can't bring myself to do it. Hmm. I said, man, once you do it, I, yeah, I said, you know, how you've been telling me the guy's name is Matthew. I said, you know, how you've been telling me over months, I get this problem, that problem, the other problem, all of those problems go away. You know, you're moving heavy weight, you're not doing complete movements, change it up, mm -hmm. lighten the weight, go deep, go hard. It's the only way to recruit new muscle cells. And by the way, the guy's in incredible shape. You right. know, I shouldn't be telling him anything, but he's no, but, spending yeah. a lot of time and effort to do what he could do with a lot Absol less time. Absolutely, absolutely, yep. Right. So with that in mind, take me through, if someone came to you, mm -hmm. take me through it. Uh, what, what, what do you, you know? Okay. 
And by the way, let me tell you this. I've never been able to do the one set. I've been trying to convince myself to do the one set. I don't do gazillions of sets. Mm -hmm. I'll do two or three. Um, I always convince myself that the warm up sets is because I'm old and I want my back to, to be ready, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. like on squats and that kind of, I like to grease the skids on squats and, and uh, deadlifts and that it, kind man. of thing. But take me through it. Convince okay, so me. What, so what you're, what you're um, explaining is a philosophy more than it is physiology. Okay. So if, if, if we're trying to instigate protein uptake, muscle growth, hypertrophy, okay, we have to reach a chemical threshold. There's a certain amount of enzymes that shift up, they shift down. In other words, we disrupt homeostasis, right, Vinny? And if you stay in nothing. homeostasis, what happens? Homeostasis, nothing. You, 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 nothing you, you, changes. Everything's nothing cool. Nothing changes. You know. All right. The ultimate homeostasis is death. Nothing fucking happens, all right? All right. So, but we want to, we want, we, you know, we want to disrupt homeostasis, but we want to disrupt it in a way that's stimulating, not irritating and damaging, okay? That's why the slow movement. I can take you to failure, Vinny, like you want to, you think you'd die. I don't do it with everybody, but relatively, if I get an 80 year old lady who hasn't done anything in 25, 40 years, she still wants to go to that limit for her. It's subjective. So I can have a four, I can have a 400 pound guy who hasn't done anything and he's going to start losing weight. And for him, I can get to those type two B glycolytic anaerobic hypertrophy friendly fibers by having him do a quarter of a wall seat for maybe 12, 15 seconds. If I take my world-class athletes, I've got guys that have won gold medals in the Olympics, have world records and all that shit, NBA uh, MVPs, okay? It takes harder work relatively. He's not gonna sit on a wall and get tired, but if I have him do some uh, leg extensions to failure, leg curls to failure, I guarantee that son of a bitch is not gonna be able to run around the room, okay? Because actually, the stronger you get, the more you can tax your system. And once I would love to train you one set to failure with like seven to 10 exercises, your whole body will be done in less than 20 minutes. And you will not say, Ben, can we do some more stuff? Because you know how to work hard. So, but I have to teach people hard is relative to you. You know, you, you've done uh, cycling, right? Sure. Now somebody who first gets on a friggin' bike, and goes 12 miles an hour for 10 minutes is going to be fucking winded and their quads are going to be screaming to you and me. And I'm not, I'm not a professional cycle guy, but I've got some strong thighs. To me, it's bullshit. We could, you know, we could call, call up what you call the ice cream room. You know, you go back and forth. You know, OK, but understand that we want to recruit those type 2B muscle fibers. They're the most they use energy at the highest rate. They use glycogen. So they, they're not aerobic. OK. But understand, we want to get to those and we want to work them to what I call a threshold, Vinny. At that point at which, once I get there metabolically or chemically, I have irreversibly and irrevocably stimulated a positive adaptation. Once you do that, get out of dodge. You can't reach threshold more than reaching threshold. Threshold is the rock at the end of the cliff. I push it. Once it starts falling, that's threshold. If I try to push it anymore, I'm going to get killed chasing it reach threshold, which externally is failure within probably, and I hate, I'm not a numbers guy, but between 30 and 90 seconds, then he expose that muscle to high intensity, slow, constant load tension. You cannot do any more to build muscle. Now, can you augment that like a bodybuilder by you know, chemically? Can you augment that with other kind of things? Yes, you can. I'm talking about 95% of the human beings on the planet, okay? And if I had to train a bodybuilder, I'd do some things different. But then we're talking about super physiological um, uh, objectives. These guys don't want to be really strong and really lean. They want to be ridiculously strong and ridiculously lean. Okay, so that's a different thing. But I'm talking now about people that are obese or people that are diabetic or people that have maybe 10 or 12 pounds to lose and they can't do it. You always stress, you know, no sugar, no grains. Right. Big friggin' magic, okay? You do that right away, you're like 80% of the way there. Now, what's the other part of the formula? The other part, if any, is using the muscle system, which is the most potent stimulator for fat burning, okay, for your brain health. Use the muscle system prudently, efficiently, and safely 
and you've got a pretty good platform. Okay. That's, that's my plan. Okay. I come to you for mm -hmm. a workout. All right. Yeah. Let, let's use me since I'm okay. the one. Yeah, you want to yeah. get leaner. You want to get stronger. What do you want? Tell me your objective. Um, okay. Uh, let me give myself an objective here. Um, I'm 59 years old. Uh, I'm fighting sarcopenia. I want to put on a little muscle. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm lean. I, I have, I have no problem okay. with fat. You know, okay. I, I want to, I want to add a little muscle. I'm not going to take any hormone replacement. Am hey, I doing yeah, I got you. I got you. What, what am I doing? What, what does the workout okay. look like for me? Your I'm workout looks opinion. Like, your workout looks like mine. Looks like my world record holder. Looks like my starter. Okay. It's all relative. It's subjectively different. Objectively, uh, objectively different. Subjectively, we're all trying to push to the next level. Okay. So you want to prevent sarcopenia, which means you want to make sure you maintain and gain to whatever extent you can muscle and protein uptake and protein synthesis, you know, take eating food and making it into muscle and maintaining right. that muscle. Right. Right. Okay. So I want to work all your major muscle groups. Okay. I want to work large muscles to small. The reason for that is there are two aspects of exercise of muscle training. One is global, meaning how is my respiratory system, my hormone system, my cardiovascular system responding to the taxation locally of my bicep or my pecs or my lats. Okay. So locally, I know that if I isolate a muscle, and this is physiology, this is not Dr. Ben, I didn't invent this shit, okay? You can work somewhere between 30 and 90 seconds, all things being equal, which they never are, but sometimes you want to fail in that time frame. When I tell you I can, I can finish off your delts in 32 seconds, and that's all you need to do, do a set and I'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about, okay? Okay. They're fast twitch muscle fibers there. They, what does that mean? It means they get tired fast. You can't, if you're going 60 seconds, 90 seconds on your delts, the weight's too light. Okay. So that's how I just, so I start, I teach technique first and teach you safe procedure. And then we just go. Now a guy like you has a history of training. It takes me like three workouts to get you to my maximum where I want you. And then from there, you get a little bit better at doing it. But at your age, with your condition, unless there's some block chemical block in your metabolism you're going to put on muscle i vinnie i put on muscle on 75 80 83 years old and the literature says you can't do that i do it every fucking day okay i have a guy that's 83 years old lean kind of like you okay um in decent shape when he came in to see me at 76 years old but never really did he did you know fiddling around with dumbbells or whatever right he trains religiously very wealthy, very smart guy. All right. That guy last week at 83 is the strongest he's been since I know him eight years ago. And he was really decently strong. That guy is progressively getting stronger into his 80s. Put on muscle to the point, Vinny, where he had to buy and he's got expensive clothes. He had to buy all new upper body stuff. OK. Right. And he, and he looks wonderful and he feels good. And he blah, blah, blah. OK. And, and OK, that's one example. But I've done this hundreds of times, if not thousands. Okay. Twice a week, 15, 18 minutes. Vinny, I've been training twice a week for 15 minutes for 50 friggin' years. And I go out, you know, I'm an old man. Let's face it. I'm 73 years friggin' old. I go to the dry cleaner and I go, wow, how much time do you spend in the gym? I say 15 minutes twice a week. <laughs> they go, no. I said, come see my gym. Watch me work out. It's as hard as I can do. Now I can't okay, work so out. Ben, all right. So yeah. Ben, that, that's, I want the prescription for the audience. So you ready? Yeah. yeah. So you want the exercises? Right, so, so wait, you said big to small. We, we mm -hmm. want the audience to know that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, uh, let's say, what, what do you start with? Bench press? You, you work no, 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 no. Big, large to small, Vinny. I go quads. Oh, so we start with legs. Yeah, they're the biggest. They are the most important global stimulator of muscle growth. Okay, we want that. I go, here's what I do. Leg extension, leg curl, maybe leg press if you want. Okay. Then I do lats, either a pull down or a pull over. Okay. Then I do shoulders, lateral raise. Then I do pecs, pec fly. Uh, I mean, and you can substitute some of these things, but I like direct um, single joint movements. Pec flies, if not a bench press for some people. It, and again, we have to work around orthopedic issues, but whatever. Okay. Pec flies, curls, tricep. Okay. That's my basic routine. Then I'll teach them how to, I'll teach them how to work their abs. So it only takes like two minutes instead of two. 
250 reps, okay? Uh, how to isolate abs. And then if there's anything specific, I do that. But everybody in my place does the same basic workout. And then I configure it to whatever we have to work around, issues, positions, uh, surgeries, limitations. Then you, you change it. You have variables. You take the, the second best choice, okay? But I, I prefer, and this is the, one of the last things I spoke to Arthur before he passed. I said, Arthur, between you and me, and we speak, we had spoken a lot. I said, if you had a perfect rotary isolated movement for all your major muscle groups, would you need anything else? And he said, no. I said, I totally friggin' agree with you. That's all you would need. Okay. And he loved my slow training. He, in fact, when he sold Nautilus, he opened a company called Medex. Okay. They were kind of quasi therapeutic, but they were designed, Vinny, to go slow. They were frictionless. Okay. They had a rod that pushed the weights up. They didn't have pulleys to, you know, pull them up and guide rods. Uh, the increments were minute because in slow training, if you go up, uh, you know, two pounds, four pounds, it can be considerable because you're not using kinetic energy or momentum. So he developed all those machines. Those are also very good machines. A lot of them. I personally liked the padding and the posturing on the old machines a little better, but then again, it may be, you know, I'm, I'm old and I didn't want to change. Right. I, I don't know, but I'm saying that, that that's my personal preference, but I can certainly, and I can use those techniques that I developed from the Nautilus with whatever I have available, whether it be bands or dumbbells or, you know, body weight, I'm not crazy about only because when I see guys doing body weight exercises, it almost seems to me, you know, like Cirque du Soleil shit, you know, I got one leg here, I got one, you know, so I call it a jerk du Soleil because these guys show, and they're in great shape, don't get me wrong, but sure, they show sure. shit you and I could not show the average person. I was, well, why am I going to show a guy, you know, pistol squats? 50 year old, 40 year old guy. Yeah, my ridiculous. buddy Don always says, he goes, you ever do pistol squats? He, I, I said, no, he goes, you, you don't do them. It's like, no, I don't, I don't want to bust a knee doing yeah, that, that pistol yeah. squat. Yeah. I did them when I was young. W what am I proving by doing a pistol? Exactly. Squat? I mean, I'm not into stunts. I'm into getting, you know, a response yeah. from my effort, you know? Um, you, when you were going through the exercises, a couple of things stuck out. Yeah. Um, you, you, you start with quads and hamstrings, something I, I, I still do. Okay. Um, and you said you may or may not do leg press. Why is that? Okay. Um, because I want to be, a, I'm a minimalist. Okay. Um, the reason if, if I would do leg press and I, I would say half of my people do leg press, I'll be honest with you. Okay. The reason I do quads and I do, uh, hamstrings first is I want to pre fatigue my legs so that I can get some good glute work out of the, out of the uh, leg press. Okay. Because right. what's going to happen if you go leg press first, what's going to fail your quads. Okay. Right. And understanding that if I go now and try to work my quads on a leg extension, I mean, I'm going to be minimized. I want to get those direct primary move movements done. And then I'll do what I call my compound movement. So if I have some advanced guys, when I say advanced, they want to do a little something. I'll do a pec fly and a double chest machine. You can do a press, right? Okay. So you, again, your pecs are going to fail if you do a bench press. Okay. Because your triceps failed before your triceps are the weak link. Okay. Right. So if you really want to get to your pecs, okay. Uh, do your pecs in isolation before they're pre-fatigued. Then go to the bench press, which is basically an anterior delt tricep pec move while the arms now have the ability to push the pecs as opposed to it being the other way around. So you can't hit that primary intended right. muscle group, right? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That, that's where I wanted to get out of it. And you also didn't mention, or maybe you mentioned it very fast and I didn't catch it. Um, you, met, you went to deltoids first, obviously for the same reason that you just mentioned with the pecs on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the pecs for the, the, the chest, but now yes. we're talking about the shoulders. Yeah. I didn't hear you mention shoulder press at all. Is there a no, reason? I, okay. I don't start with any secondary moves, but if I do it and I do with some of my guys, okay. Uh, and a couple of girls is I'll do the prime. You'll do a shoulder lateral. Now you'll pre fatigue. Now the thought is this pre fatigue means when I go right to my press, now I can use the strength in my fresh triceps. Okay to push the delts past their normal capacity. That's a theory, okay? But that you would do that in any case because you don't wanna go right to a press and it was my favorite movement as a lift in when I was a kid, but you don't wanna go right to a press if you wanna work shoulders because your triceps are gonna fail before we get the deep inroad into the shoulders, okay? It's, it's that simple.
It's just, that's just kinesiology. That's just how the muscles work. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more, but where does uh, the trapezoas fit into this whole scheme? These traps, anytime you move the shoulder, your traps are going to work. Now, don't forget, Vinny, your traps go from the back of your neck mm -hmm. all the way down under your shoulder blades. People don't realize how big traps are. Oh, they're, they're huge. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. anytime you do the show, when you do, when you do a, a lateral raise, big time traps. When you do a row, big time traps. When you do a pull down, big time traps. When you do a pullover, big time traps. Okay. When you do a curl, the traps stabilize the scapula. Okay. When you do a tricep, same thing. So traps, to me, traps are simple. They're easy. I mean, the reason we got big traps when we were kids, I don't think because we just did shrugs. I, don't, I think because we pressed and we bench pressed and we did cleans. You do cleans. You see, you see the traps on Olympic lifters? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, there you, is. You're and they don't do time. any friggin', you know, shrugs. You know, that's just because they work so much. When you get alarmed, what do you do? Then you, you hunch your shoulders. What yeah, happens? Of course. Traps. Yeah. Where most people have neck problems, they're traps. I mean, that muscle exactly. is constantly friggin' working. Yeah. No, th that all makes sense. Um, now, you say when you get to 60 or 90 seconds, you just didn't have enough pressure on the bar. How, you know, you, I'm with you on the 25 seconds per rep. I have trouble well, doing it. You know, I get to 18, no. 19 seconds and I'm, I'm ready to. No, it's 25 it seconds on the pullover, Vinny. Don't forget, that's 180 degree movement twice. Right. Okay. If you do a lateral raise it's only a 25 40 degree movement it's not going to take you in other words when people say your rep should take yeah. 10 seconds some people say do a 10 second rep well isn't that stupid this movement takes me through 180 degrees no, i'm sorry 360 degrees of movement because i got 180 down 180 up right the lateral raise takes me through 20 and 25 you know so am i going to do a 45 degree movement at the same timing of a 100 no 300 degree movement no right at the same speed one would take four five six times as long that's what dictates how long the rep takes okay so we don't want to overcome the resistance with kinetic energy or momentum which your body listen your body's going to try to make this thing easy that's the natural instinct if you can't move a, a weight in this position what do you do you jerk it back or you change your posture w what's that doing it's unloading the muscle that's getting fatigued so right. this is a little bit counterintuitive, right? You sure. want to have direct load on the muscle. You don't want it to be able to recover, you know, on a negative. You want the negative to be um, taxing. You don't want to let the weight back. You want to resist it back. Okay, there's all kinds of cues that I use to get that constant load. So now my physiological timing of when fatigue should happen is pretty accurate. And it is accurate. It, it, I mean, listen, I've done, you know, maybe, I don't know, a million friggin' workout. I don't know how many, who the hell knows how many. But anyway, um, and, and it's across the board. It, are, there always, are, there, are there always outliers? Absolutely. Even within your own body, you may have an outlier group of muscles, okay? But we work with that. I mean, you got to see what's going on. You're like a doctor. This is not yeah. working. This is a, a weakness. We got to fix it. That's all. And um, I'm with you on twice a week. Uh, you know, you exhaust a muscle twice a week. People yeah. are doing more than that. <clears throat> they're, they're just wearing themselves out, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And people who think they're doing high intensity interval training every morning of the week are fooling yeah, themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you talk to that a little bit? Yes. Okay. H I I T, high intensity interval training. If we are working at a high intensity, which really has nothing to do with uh, very little to do with how hard it is, but it has to do with the muscle fiber. What muscle fibers are we recruiting? The high intensity muscle fibers are glycolytic, high intensity fast fatiguing muscle fibers that produce and use energy at an enormous rate. If we're doing high intensity training, by nature, it has to be interval. You can't do a long period of high intensity training. Muscle taxation, you can't do it. Muscles shut off, okay? If I ask you, Vinny, to go up some enormous fucking hill on your bike, I mean, and, and pedal at X number of miles an hour, you can't fucking do it, okay? No. Because high intensity can only last probably and again, depending on the definition, a very, very short period of time. Can't do it. You have to back down into doing lower intensity. You got to stop or you got to back down, in which case it's not high intensity muscle fiber recruitment. Okay. So that's the deal. So if you're doing truly high intensity on the elliptical or a treadmill, is that what you're kind of referring to when they do something like that on a daily basis? Or, or, or any of it, you know, they'll go, in, you see them going into these cubes as they're calling them now, or the box or whatever they're calling it. 
and they're beating on a railroad tie or they're oh <laughs> yeah that's like yeah, i'm well, doing all this crap and please and please. they're doing these oh. crazy looking um pull-ups yeah. that aren't pull-ups and no there's all I, this I, crazy stuff and i'm like oh you have no idea what you're doing to your body right now yeah and see no listen that that's to me that's manual labor or it's stunts or it's it's performance training if i gave you a pick and shovel i said dig me dig me a six foot deep three foot wide trench okay 50 feet that is fucking hard okay that's and taxes yeah. the shit out of you and you'll be sore tomorrow you consider yeah. that you consider that productive exercise i don't no no it, it's not um ben last yeah. thing um we got to stay on time here because i have okay. anna coming up in a few minutes okay um supplementation you know i i i, I eat whole foods i mm -hmm. eat a lot of red meat i love my fish chicken <clears throat> more eggs than the law allows me and mm -hmm. Vince Ronda feel, felt the same way about eggs. The more you eat, the healthier you are. Yep. Um, any supplementation, uh, and we've all, you and I have seen it all come and go over the years. Anything yes. that really works out there, anything we should be doing. I just had this discussion today and during the week. I think, and I'm not a big supplement guy, Vinny. I'm really not. I can't Same agree here. that you, okay. I think creatine, okay is really good, not only for the muscle building like we knew 25, 30 years ago, but there's a lot of good studies that creatine is great fuel for the brain, okay? Yeah. A lot of studies on cognition. So that's one I think, you know, my, my theory on supplements is if it can't hurt you and you wanna take it, what the hell, if you got the money. But if it, if it doesn't do anything at all and it could be kind of counterproductive, that's really stupid, right? Yeah. Okay, so that, that, that's one, um, I think, I, I, I'm thinking collagen, there's some good studies out. Uh, collagen might not be, especially as you get older, our collagen, and it's, it's the most ubiquitous, it's the, the most uh, protein we have is collagen. It holds everything to friggin' together. Without collagen, we'd be a big mass of bones and crap on the floor, right? Yeah. Uh, so that taken 30 to 40 minutes before a, a exercise, it, it, with some vitamin C, that's a cofactor. You have to have some vitamin C. Um, can upregulate uh, collagen uptake by about 500%. That's uh, five times normal, which I think might be beneficial. But what I don't want people to get into, and you've seen this a billion times, oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't want them to think, let's start taking all these supplements. Let's do carnitine for muscle growth. Let's do this. I mean, because at some point you make yourself insane. But I think there are a couple of that are prudent. And I just mentioned a couple I think are pretty cool. Um, and you want to make sure that you're not deficient in some of the, you know, the, the, the essential aminos and things like that. So I, I think make sure you get enough protein, number one, honestly, you know, and I, and I'm, I lean towards animal protein way strongly. Okay. I don't like to take a political position, but Jesus Christ. I mean, it, it, I don't think there's a comparison, but I don't want to get into that. Listen, anyway. the, the fact that food has become political is a crazy thing in yeah. our lifetime, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, that, I don't go there. So, but if you want to ask me privately, yeah, I'd say eat animal, you know, eat good food, eat, eat flesh food, fish, meats, poultry. Um, you can have some veggies, low carb. That's fine. That's fine with me. Uh, and, you know, then, then make, make sure you make sure it's something you can sustain behaviorally. If your diet is so restrictive that it's torture to do, you're not going to maintain it. So yeah. find that happy medium. Uh, but for a guy like you, you come to my gym, I say, Vinny, Vincenzo, at 59 years old, you have to eat protein probably after a workout because we get less efficient at utilizing the protein we eat as we get old. When we were kids, we could eat the, the can that the protein came in and we'd still grow, okay? Now yeah. you got to be a little more specific. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, the one thing, I, whenever I have these conversations about building muscle, Everyone always wants to know about um, <clears throat> steroid and, and hormones and this whole thing. I'm completely against them. I mean, we're seeing kids now dying before the 30th birthday in but the bodybuilding the world. Need, it, Vinny, you know, you and I, if we had our hormones checked, we might have a deficit. Okay, I could see that. That, that could happen, no well, question. My, mine is in a deficit, and I can build as much muscle as I want in a deficit. You know, okay, they, well... They Oh, you should be at seven or 800. I'm no, at 200, Vinny, 300. I still can, no, no. Testosterone can go from 300 to 1500 and be considered normal, whatever. So and that's yeah. ridiculous to start with. Okay. But as we get older, 
you can have an X number of, of testosterone, but are your receptors receptive? In other words, right. that your receptors may be absolutely young and youthful and vital. So you don't need that much. Okay. If you had symptoms of having too little testosterone, I would look and say, you know, this might be something that you want to consider, but almost nobody, if you're looking just to build muscle with testosterone, you got to go crazy with that. You know, it's super. And then you have downsides yeah. and problems and no, and a kid, a kid, 25, 30, 35, you know, unless they've got some issue, health issue. And they, they never do. Look, I, I, these well, I hear kids, Ben, these kids are dying now. You know, I think like 30 bodybuilders died last year. Yeah, no, I got it. Yeah, it's like it's, it's, it's not crazy, only the man. testosterone. They're doing, they're doing um, oh, insulin. Oh, they're, they're doing thyroid. They're, uh, no, it's it's ridiculous. Oh, the the crap they're taking is unbelievable. Yeah. You know, Tren, Plen, Plenbuterol. Yeah. You know, they're doing stuff. Whenever you see these ripped up girls on on uh, Instagram yeah. and holding it. They're taking clenbuterol and they're dropping dead before their thirtieth birthday. You know, you don't hear about the part when they drop dead. No. Well, those you know, pictures don't look as good as when they're alive. You know. No, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's okay. crazy. <laughs> um, folks, Villa Capelli. I'm talking to another WAP over there. Villa Capelli olive oil. <laughs> we all use olive oil. You want to talk about the best uh, best health food on the planet? I drink olive oil. I'm sorry, I do. Stuff is just great for you. Olive oil is great, but in this country, you're able to cut it up to 40% and still call it pure, unadulterated olive oil. Well, there's a way around that. Um, Villa Capelli, the longest running sponsor of this show, has pure 100% olive oil, and you will taste it when you taste this stuff. Go check out Villa Capelli. You can go to villacapelli.com or go to vinnytauteries.com and click through the banner. Either way, when you get to checkout, put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, for 10% off. If you spend over $100 after that discount, you'll get free shipping. So go check out Villa Capelli. Let them know we sent you. Put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, no wimpy Y, and uh, let them know we sent you. Uh, ben, where can they find you? Where can people get information on you? Um, <clears throat> Dr. Benbo on Google. Just D-R-B-E-N-B-O, Google. I have drbenbo.com is my, I guess there's a website. I don't, I don't do much of that stuff, but I'm on Twitter only because I like to see, there's about seven or eight people I like to look, look into. I like like your stuff. I get a kick out of it. And so, uh, but you know, if they want to, and once you go on my website, I, it even has my cell phone. If you want, I mean, I'm pretty much open, Vinny. I try to answer all the questions. Sometimes it gets a little copious, especially if I do a seminar or something and a bunch of people want stuff. I it takes me a while to catch up, but uh, they can get a hold of me if they really have any questions. And uh, I have a book, and I make two bucks a book, so I'm going to buy a lot of them. Uh, you know, it's uh, 15 minutes to fitness, and I kind of explain this whole thing with the Nautilus and the 15 minute workouts and low carb menus and stuff like that. So I think it's very helpful, uh, and that's why I wrote it just to ex answer questions that I get asked like a hundred times a day. Well, we, we appreciate that you're out there and you're doing all of that stuff. So folks, go check out drbenbo.com, D-R-B-N-B-O, and uh, you can get everything there. Um, you know what to do with me. Before you go to Amazon, go to vinnytauterist.com, click through the banner. It puts a little coal on the fire and it gets my train down the track. I'm able to keep this show free for well over 2,000 shows. So do that. We also have a super fan page there if you want to check that out. And for all of the new folks listening, uh, you know, you can get that free PDF over at VinnyTartarus.com. It's there. On behalf of Dr. Ben Bocchicchio, my name is Vinny Tartarich. Put life into living and do it with enthusiasm.